Relax, Ryo. Right, he's in hibernation mode. That thing scared the hell out of me. I almost fired my weapon. Wait, what's on the couch? It's blood. Rex, come have a look at this. Did you say blood? There's also blood on the hands and the feet of this robot. Robots are unable to harm humans, so what's with all the blood? I should check out the couch. This robot steward is a key player in the murder, but what was his role? Maybe he was trying to protect Mrs. Perry? A group of unique wind chimes. Lots of campaign documents as well as a signed photo. Of whom? That could be the key. I should finish examining this room. Yeah, you should. An obvious pressure mark can be seen on the tablecloth. Something has been moved away from it. There are dried blood stains on the front and the back of the couch. These blood stains appear to have been splashed on and then wiped off. Are we gonna bring this one home too? This is Mrs. Perry's blood, and it has been 24 hours since the blood dried up. It seems that Mrs. Perry was killed at about 12 yesterday. Besides, judging from how the blood was splashed on, the strike came from below her height. Really? Can you actually determine that? Let's assume this is the primary crime scene. I'll organize all the information we have so far. Let me know if you find something else. Uh, wait. I, I wanted to read that, actually. Oh, about the robot. A butler robot of the Caroline family, saved by Kathy Caroline during the pure blood baptism at the end of the 21st century. He joined the Caroline family to become Kathy Caroline's personal steward. He was responsible for the recruitment and the training of other servants, and was regarded as a model butler among the royal families. After Kathy's oldest granddaughter was born, he took up the responsibility of taking care of her daily life. So, what is, what is a robot like that doing here? It's, so he's not, he doesn't belong to Mrs. Perry, does he? Looks like Mrs. Perry had entertained someone at her home before she died. Let's see what information can be obtained. Alright. Maybe we'll find some DNA on the cup? Hey, this looks like the uh, Beauty and the Beast set. There are fingerprints and the lip marks for Mrs. Perry on one of the cups. The other cups has marks left by... a child? We need to find out who this is. Alright, the visitor who arrived at the midday yesterday. The tea was made yesterday from the look of the tea leaf leftovers. Mrs. Perry had a little guest before she died. I knew it. It's that little girl Alice. She's the one. And we have the candlestick. Uh, what is it? Complete with candle. Yeah, I can see that. There are some intricate patterns carved on the bottom of the stand, similar to the shape of Mrs. Perry's wounds. Murder weapon. There should be another matching candle stand. Where did the other one go? Oh, so the other one is the murder weapon. Uh, yeah, you would think the murder weapon wouldn't be here, and it would be stained with blood. Ultra detective mode. Mrs. Perry's fingerprints. So they had a candlestick fight. Fingerprints are located on the candle stand. From the book, from the look of the candle, it's only been used for a short time. It was a short fight. Uh, there should be a matching candle stand, and this is most likely the murder weapon. The pattern on the bottom of the candle stand is similar to the shape of the fatal wound. But there's no trace of blood there. The lethal weapon must be another matching candle stand. It's not here at the crime scene, so it can't be confirmed right now. We're pretty much done here. Let's find the Royd and examine the next room. Mm, I still want to hang around here. Anti-robot books are all at the bookshelf and there's some new propaganda handouts. Buddy, let's go. Hey, Royd, 
We're done with the investigation here. Let's check the next room. You can continue with the rest of the investigation. Carl told me they had called a suspect, so I better go have a look. A suspect? Sure, I'll come join in when I finish here. They really trust me, don't they? Other room. Ah, oh, it's another kitty room. A moose cake is left untouched for seemingly more than 24 hours. Is that still edible? Neatly place the tableware. The tableware has been placed neatly and there's still some space. These decorative pictures of cats are very unusual. There seems to be some hidden switches in them. Okay, oh. Hello. Mrs. Perry's schedule? There should be some important clues. There must be something in the apartment that relates to the passcode. It's a, another four-digit code, except this time they're actually numbers. I didn't really expect it to guess it right. Uh, the heating has been on the whole time and it is quite warm inside. Cat's climbing tree, which seems to have been used for a long time judging by the scratches on it. Yeah, we're not gonna figure this out. What about this one? No, it's not about lighting them up all the... Wait a second. This one is lit all the time, so does that mean there's a certain order? Holy... Sh Wait, what the hell? Are you gonna turn off by yourself? I'm just waiting. No? Well, in that case, I have to assume there's a there's an order here. Uh, we seem to be on the right path. Hmm. Holy shit. Oh. Now we are on to something. Gift for Jenny. Mrs. Paris gift for Jenny's birthday, beautifully wrapped. A special bronze key. So there are two separate objects. The key is not a gift. Maybe can we unwrap this? A special bronze key. That might be the key to the diary. Holy shit. And maybe in that diary is the is the code. God, I'm so smart. I should quit my day job and be a detective. Wow, that is Literally the worst idea I've ever I've ever had. And yes. Aha! 2128, April 21st. Let's see what's in there. I was feeling a bit upset when I saw you off at the door. You're saying the robots are becoming more determined lately, so the government is letting getting tougher and stricter and that a parade might be stopped. But you told me the robot's actions are justified, as those with consciousness and the knowledge deserve more than being treated as simple machines, that they should be given the same rights as a human being. You hugged me and I left. I almost called your name to make you stay, but I know I should support your decision. I was waiting for you with lunch ready, but the police came instead. My world became dark when they asked me to identify your body. Soon I saw you at the, in the morgue. I knew it was you even though your hair, your face and your clothes were all covered in blood. I wish I was wrong. My love, my world, I can't believe you were murdered by those cold and heartless machines. I will never forget what they have done. So, uh, this is just why she doesn't like machines. But her husband 
seems to be a pro machine activist. That's it? That's the only page? I thought I was reading a diary, what the hell? Well, obviously there was no cold. Oh, I'm still s searching for clues. Okay. There was no cold, right? Wait a second. The cold... Actually, the cold could be the date of her, her husband's death. Do I have the... Uh... Alright, I have the number. Let's go try it out. That would be a reasonable date to use as a password. Uh, the, the year is 2128. No. Uh, the, I think it was April 21st. Yay! How many dates can I check? Alright, let's start with the first one. Oh, can I even go back? No, I don't think. this. Is, these are the only dates with actual things to do. October 1st. All day rent due. So, two, she was collecting rent from two persons plan to prepay for December of 2124 2141 feed little things cookies and dried fish cookies and more water so okay let's check out the uh, October 18th feed cats Alice is visiting prepare fruit key fruit tea a lot of our days are filled with feeding cats. I'm assuming that's what little things mean. It looks like Mrs. Perry's hatred for robots didn't extend to electronic equipment. According to this, the only guest she had yesterday was a little girl named Jenny. Oh yeah, that's... The present was for her, but she didn't get it. Cutie. Jenny will come visit, prepare some strawberry mousse. That's the cake. But they said... He said it's not eaten. Lonely little girl, talk to her. How about 21st? Vincent is visiting and he likes mold car cake. Ask him about the bully. Bully. There's also a lot of Vincent, but this hasn't happened yet. Like this is supposed to happen. 25th, vote for Mr. Sholokov, go for it. And there's 28th, all day, birthday surprise, Jenny's birthday, don't forget a surprise. I think we are good to go now. going to try to piece the big one first. This is just purely guessing, by the way. I'm not basing this on any kind of logic. This would be perfect. What are you talking about? I don't think this is gonna work. Uh, the important thing is something needs to connect to the uh, little wheel up there. And since this little this body is too small, I'm, I'm assuming you are the one for the job. And see if you're here. Hmm, I don't know. Nope, I'm 
I'm still working on it. I don't know if this, there's any technique in this. I want to try it. No, you're not even moving. So you can't be the connecting dot to whatever this is. I'm assuming it has to be you. I'm going to try to piece the big ones first and then connect the dots with the smaller ones. There aren't a lot of places for the big ones to go. Hey, what about this one? Uh, did I just do it? Holy shit! <laughs> Mrs. Perry had entertained little visitors in the living room with fruit tea and the two of them seemed to have an argument for some reason. The visitors struck Mrs. Perry with a candle stand from the small cabinet. The strike didn't kill Mrs. Perry immediately, but immobilized her. She died sometime afterwards. The robot entered the crime scene and dumped the body. The robot later stopped working and stayed where he was for unknown reasons. The candle stand, the lethal weapon was taken away from the crime scene, and it's highly likely been destroyed by the murderer. Further investigation will need to be carried out by the police. The crime scene investigation is almost complete. That little girl Jenny, I need to ask Roy to bring her in for questioning. There's some suspicious about this robot too. I need Roy's authorization to carry out an internal core investigation. It sounds like you're still in the forest, Rex. I thought you quit. Or retired? Hmm, what's with you, buddy? Alright, let's arrest the little girl. The case closed. Mystery is solved. Christopher? Who are you? I didn't kill her. Not me. No, not me. We have solid evidence and a clear motive. You can't hope to get away with it. And I have all the means to get the truth out of you when we are back at the police station. Uh, okay. Shall we talk about this? Rex, Rex, you are the person I need right now. This is the suspect, Christopher. He's one of the homeless people from the neighborhood and was pawning jewelry at the store this morning. The jewelry belonged to Mrs. Perry. Ah, he's the thief. This guy? I've seen him around. He isn't capable of murder. Maybe theft and a burglary, but not murder. 
First of all, the timing isn't right. According to the investigation of the corpse, the theft happened four to five hours after the time of death. If he wanted to murder someone for their valuables, he wouldn't have waited hours before he took them off the body. Secondly, there are no traces of him at the primary murder scene, Mrs. Perry's home. If he wasn't present at the primary crime scene, it means he was the thief, but not a murderer. Exactly, you're absolutely right, sir. I stole the jewelry, but I didn't kill anyone. Based on all the evidence we've collected after the crime scene, the little girl named Jenny should be our prime suspect right now. The main suspect is a little girl? What the hell is wrong with you? Alright, Carl, take him away and we'll talk later. Maybe the girl is a robot. The robot was killing her because... She's anti-ro- She's anti-robots? Maybe that's why. Alright, Carl, take him away and we'll talk later. Yes, sir. Let's go, pal. Don't try anything funny. And there they go. Right. I need you to get Jenny. I have to ask her some questions face to face. Okay, I'll get her. We need to find out more about that robot too. Yes. There's a lot of suspicions about him. I need your authorization to examine him from the inside. No problem. I'll find you if anything turns up. All right. Jeez, man. Give it here. I'm fist bumping you through the through the screen right now. This guy is a private eye's best friend. Apart from the cat. How's it going? Ride is busy assigning jobs, so I'd better go examine the robot. Wait, I thought he'd need authorization, so the authorization is just him saying yes. Okay, <laughs> that simplifies things up. The outer shell of the robot's head, in order to access the electronic brain, I need to first unlock each slot and remove the covering. Unlock each slot. Uh, right. How exactly are we going to do that? Oh, shit. Are you going to give me trouble? No, I think that was quite simple. In fact, I don't even know why I had to do that. I can proceed by sliding out pieces that aren't interlocked with you, with others. The age of this robot means that the system isn't too complicated. So, what's the, what seems to be the problem here? Wait. Why? Uh, what is? What, what am I doing? Well, so, what kind of? Not interlocked with others. What, what, what do you mean interlocked? Like, is this interlocked with anything else? And, and, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm kind of confused about all this, to be honest. Why don't you bring them back? No, no, you're not. Alright, if this works, then I'm assuming you just have... With all three of them gone, I think you can... You're free to remove uh, this one. And with them gone, maybe this. Alright, we did it, but I'm, I'm a little confused about the mechanics there, so I, I'm, I, I expect that to give me some trouble down the line. A primitive form of anti-temper protection. Modern robots don't use the system anymore. I just need to move the signal to the center's target. What the hell just happened here? Oh, I did it. I have no idea how. But I did it. What the? 
That's an implanted device. Okay. Uh, what's going on? Holy shit. Exactly my question, Rex. This is the robot's memory. Why didn't he save Mrs. Perry's life? That's a violation of robot principles. Really? Didn't you have some kind of war between humans and robots in this world? I mean, are we still abiding by Asimov's three principles? My head. It hurts so bad. Hey, Rex! Rex, what's wrong, Rex? What's wrong with you, Rex? You seem to be in great pain just now. I don't know. I think there's something wrong with this robot. There's some kind of device implanted in its brain. We'll talk about that later. The case has been taken over by the Secret Service, di Secret Service Division and we need to withdraw from the investigation. The SSD? What the hell is going on? We found Jenny. Turns out she's the daughter of an important man. No sooner had I retrieved her file than the order to transfer authority of the investigation came in. They're already here. <laughs> Man in black. Is he? Oh, that's the guy. This place is under our control. Leave as soon as possible and stay out of our investigation. So that's it. We're not gonna protest about it. name is weaving you know it's you can't really be a good guy if you're called weaving right I mean eh, there's Hugo weaving but he's he looks like a bad guy inspector Royd it's quite surprising that you're asking a private detective to assist with your investigation Rex found the crime scene so we asked him to help you with the investigation that's all you just asked him to help. Is that a standard of police procedure? And I've heard you've decided to make our Miss Jenny a suspect. Jenny, can you tell me what happened yesterday? I was at Alice's tea party and went home when it was over. You found your fingerprints on the tea set on the table, so Mrs. Perry was having you as a guest. Well, I was having my usual visit to Mrs. Perry's place like I promised. I stayed for just a while and I have no idea what happened later. Please tell the truth, Jenny. I've seen the robot steward's memories, and I know you were there when Mrs. Perry was immobilized on the couch. The steward went crazy and attacked Mrs. Perry. I, I ran away because I was scared. I'm afraid that's not possible. From the splash of blood, the strike came from below Mrs. Perry's, way, Mrs. Perry's height. The robot steward is simply too tall to have delivered a strike consistent with the evidence we have discovered at the scene. The blow was also not strong enough to have been inflicted by a robot. All signs point to a child. That's... I... Miss, you don't need to answer his questions. We'll find a professional to record a proper testimony later. Detective, you viewed the robot's memory without permission, didn't you? About your so-called lethal weapon, where is it? Hey, William. You want to join in the conversation? Holy shit! What is wrong with the cat? Is that... Is that the... This is it. Well, now that we have the alleged murder weapon, all we need to do is match the blood and the fingerprints. Well, that's our job. Oh, no, sorry. Well, that's our job now. Please leave immediately. Well, Inspector Royd. Maybe I should have a chat with your superiors. That won't be necessary. We were just about to leave. Wait a minute. I have something for Jenny. Oh, yeah. The present. Whatever you have for Miss Jenny. Sorry. Whatever you have for Miss Jenny, give it to her now and leave immediately. Jenny, this is from Mrs. Perry. Is it for me? 
is this? And I got to read it somehow. Dear, Je dear Jenny, you are a kind and lovely girl, often coming to chat with me. Today is your birthday, and you are about to become a little adult. I know you like Elizabeth very much, so I have decided to give her to you today. I know you will definitely be good to her. I believe this because you are a loving child. By the way, I have also made the nameplate, which has already been engraved with her name. From today, Elizabeth is yours. I hope that you will grow up happily, and I will always be happy with your favorite cakes and fruit teas when you need them. Your grandma Perry. Oh, grandma. Grandma? Isn't Jenny supposed to be some someone's important daughter? So in that case, why is Mrs. Perry living in this neighborhood? And um, sure. What? How could this be? I didn't want to harm her, Mrs. Perry. I'm sorry. It's that robot. Wait. What are you talking about, Jenny? About the robot? Can you tell? Enough, Inspector Lloyd. Get this person out of here. He should never have been here in the first place. Right. I believe there is something unusual about the robot. If we give up now, we'll lose critical evidence. Now that the SSD has taken over, we can't really continue the investigation, even if we wanted to. To hell with those guys! Can you get a picture of the implanted device? I didn't have a chance to take one. It won't be easy. You had an unusual reaction earlier, didn't you? Did something happen? Well, I'm not quite sure. Now that I think about it, maybe something on that robot affected me. I see. Also, there's something else. But let's talk later tonight, somewhere quiet. There's a good bar, I know. All right. I need to ask someone about the implanted device first. I need to head back to the station now. I'll send you the address of the bar I mentioned. Oh no, right. You're probably gonna be murdered in some gutter, and this is the last time I'm gonna see you. Well, bye. Well done, William. How did you find the lethal weapon? I just watched the movies. William was meowing and dancing. Seems that he had quiet and experience. Holy shit! Seriously, Elizabeth, are you saying it was you? Elizabeth, are you saying it was you who took the candle stand away? Meow. I don't think you need to add a meow in the cat dialogue if you just if you wanted them to have human level dialogue. Yes, I was thinking was all I was thinking was I couldn't let Jenny hit Mrs. Perry with that thing again, so I took it away. Really, Jenny? What the fuck? Good thinking, but now it's very important a piece of evidence. If we can get it back, we can confirm the suspect. Uh, you two are way too smart for cats. But but I lost it. Calm down, Elizabeth. It's okay. Please tell me what happened. I was so scared after I jumped off Mrs. Perry's windowsill that before I knew what was happening, I had run into the Biocats territory. Then... Oh, the Biocats. We don't like them. Why do we have bio rats and bio cats? It's all my fault. Hmm, the Biocats territory. A fallen billboard. I think I know the place. Really? That's great. Elizabeth, time is running out. I need to find the lethal weapon now. Get some rest and wait for me. Aww. William, don't waste any time. Go find the lethal weapon. Meow! Jesus, why... What is going on here? Caution, electricity. Mm. Guess we have to deal with that. So we can only look at it? Oh, it's missing a handle. I get it. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, is that a bow cat? Should I approach him? Martin? How many cats are gonna be in this game? 
Thanks to the insightful leadership of the boss, we cats have driven those damn biocats from the Fitcher family out of this district. Oh, this is a normal cat. His name's Martin. So, in this society, other than humans and the humans having this squabble with uh, robotic counterparts, the same is going on with cats. I take that. We cats are the most powerful family. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a little hard to take you seriously when when you have to finish it with a meow. Oh, what's going on here? The Bourbon family space. Uh, is there a godfather here? Roko. Cassio went and stole the cat dip again. He told us all he was clean, but look at the trouble he's caused. He deserved to be punished by the boss. Meow. Who knows what kind of sickness the blue cat got from the human beings. He's been calling himself an artist recently. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? What a bizarre color of fur, just like those bio cats. Humans have such strange taste. Have you played Fortnite lately? Ah, uh, there's Fred. Meow! One of the boss's favorite quotes. Each cat has their own destiny. My destiny is to be a slave for Miss, Miss Connie. Oh, Miss Connie. That's a sad destiny. Hey, that's the handle I need. Ah, uh, are you interested in my work? Um, I'm more interested in that control stick. Meow! A cat of fine taste, I see. Perhaps you're not my- Perhaps you are my soulmate. You are male, aren't you? Because like your name is Tom, and you have never mind. For you see, this is my masterpiece. Sure. Can you give it to me? The other cats don't appreciate my work. Meow. You really want it? I can give it to you on one condition. If you can answer the three questions correctly about me and my family, I'll give you the control stick. Are you ready for the question? I don't think I know anything, but sure. What is my profession? You said you're an artist, right? Correct. Meow. I am an artist. A rising star artist. Next question. Meow. A quotation from the boss. Oh. Okay. So I do have the answers. Correct. Meow. I have my own destiny too. And that is art. Next question. Meow. What is the name of our rival family? Shh. Fitcher? I think that's correct, Meow. Those biocats have no artistic taste at all. You answered all correctly. You really are my soulmate, Meow. No, I'm not. As promised, here's my all-time greatest masterpiece as a gift, Meow. A very artistic-looking control stick. It's so artistic. <laughs> okay. The no passing order is still in effect. You cannot proceed without a permit, Meow. To meow with it. <laughs> what the hell? It seems like I'll have to pay a visit to the boss, the infamous Vito Bourbon. Feline turf wars. Wait, there's actually a file about that or something? Wait, there. This is new. Uh, the robot that broke down at the Mrs. Perry crime scene. The electronic brain was broken apart and was connected to an outside device through a wire. As the electronic brains of robots used a new quantum defense system, such physical damage would make acquiring information from the robot impossible. Maybe even starting the self-destruction program. But this robot behaved differently. The method used is not confirmed. Basically, that robot was crazy. That's what all this is leading up to. I'll see you, Martin. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. I don't believe I've used this yet. Oh, no, this is... Okay, I get it. Hey, 
Hey, fishy fishy. It's time for some lunch. Holy crap. Ah, oh, poor fish. You died for a worthy cause. You're just gonna have to take my word on it. So now we are free to traverse over here. Meow, my eyes are blinded by the light. So what, can you turn them off? Falkenberg. I'm so jealous of those guys down there going, getting to see Miss Anna every day. This is the fat cat that was like eating garbage from us. Uh, okay, who's Anna? Hmm? Do you want do you want to meet the boss? Well, I can get you over here if you can turn the color of the neon lights into the color of Miss Anna. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? The color of Anna? What color would that be? Oh, there we go. So it's red, yellow, green. Got it. Yes, Miss Anna. Miss Anna's hair has been correctly restored. You deserve a meeting with a boss for your courage and wisdom. Jump out to the platform now. Oh, it's a system. Is he coming back? What about this thing? Maybe later. Gotta meet the boss. Bourbon family's living room. Okay, this place looks very serious. Brazzy. Meow. Hold it right there. Who do you think you are just walking in here like that? So this is the big guy. It's okay, Brassy. It's not to scare our little friend here. Meow. Sorry, boss. I was just worried that. There's no need to focus on. In fact, he might have arrived at precisely the right time. The Bourbon family could use a cat like him. You must be William. I've heard about you. Res respectfully, Don Vito, I need your permission to enter the Bowcat's territory. Courageous and respectful, these virtues are mostly lost among the younger generations. This is a turbulent time for our family and its territory, so I declared a no passing order. No cat shall pass except for family. The good news is for you is that I require some assistance for a very important task. If you agree to it, you will have my blessing to travel as you please. Guess I don't have a choice. Seems like the Godfather has given me an offer I can't refuse. Aha! Each cat has their own destiny. Now that you're here, make the most of it. Well, Don Vito, what can I do for you? Oh, I just noticed his name is Vito. Of course it is. A biomechanical cat has infiltrated our family and is a threat to us all. I need you to help me root him out. Do you have an idea who it might be? Well, <clears throat> talk to my counselor Martin about the details. He knows all about these bowcats. All right, I got it. Looks like you need some ne you need some rest. Tell him if you have any if you have any clues, <laughs> you can trust him on this. You will be a friend of the Bourbon family if you can complete this task successfully. Nobody can hurt Don Vito when I'm around. What about the, the guy up there? How do I... Okay. Oh, that's Vito. 
Let your friends underestimate your advantages and your foes overestimate your disadvantages. That does sound like something the Godfather would say. Connie? Father granted me Father granted me because of the future family event. I'm so bored, Meow. Sweetheart, can you play with me? Well actually I'm kinda busy right now. What's the rush? Surely you can spare a few moments to play the piano for me. Well Uh okay, I did not expect this. Come on, follow my steps, meow. What just happened? Wrong. Uh, it would be better if I could actually no piano. Very good. Looks like I need to make it harder for you. Listen up closely. Oh god. Yeah, I'm just remembering the tunes. It's better if it's a piano, it's not just a visual memory. You can actually make some logic out of it. It's just a few keys. Very impressive. I like your performance. This little ball is for you. Hey, I got a ball! A ball! Oh my god! This is the best thing ever! A pretty leather ball. The cat scratches on the ball show that the owner loved it a lot. Oh my god! You are more talented than I thought. I like you. I like you too! You give me a ball! 